What's up, guys? Welcome. As always, I'm excited to be here to share some value today on really how to maximize the end of the year. So if you're watching the replay, if you're on live, I appreciate you. We're going to wait a second um, to make sure everyone gets on. Hold on one second, guys. I'm going to share the link. Welcome. Go ahead and say your name and where you're calling in from. Go ahead and say your name. I love seeing the people that are watching all over the world. So uh, we're going to do a contest too, but I'm excited to be here. So go ahead and post below uh, where you're watching from all over the world. I need to do one more thing and then we'll be ready to roll. What's up, Steven? Good to see you, man. Wisconsin, we have Georgia, we have Las Vegas, we have Michigan, we have Oregon in the house. Green Michelle, what's up, guys? Good to see you on here. Good to see some Oregon love. Boston, Louisiana, what's up, Pedro? All right, hold on. All right, we should be all set. Welcome, guys. So today we're, we're going to focus on I don't like whole, long, drawn-out videos. I know how valuable time is, and I know how precious time is, especially if you have loved ones you care about. So I'm not going to take up a ton of time, but a lot of people have been asking me the last month or two how to maximize the rest of the year. What is my thought process? What does my schedule look like? How do I make sure I maximize experiences? I, I'm present with the ones I love, but also I crush results, and I actually get ready to build momentum in the next year. So really, it's how to make the most of the end of the year, the last four or five weeks, and then how to make sure you build massive momentum into January. And my number one focus is always adding as much value to you and giving you as much clarity as humanly possible. And remember, literally one or two perspective shifts in my career, it's been crazy to think back, one or two different ways of thinking or one or two different ways to market a product or one or two perspective shifts or maybe a new action plan can literally yield you an extra 10, 15, 20 to $100,000 in income for the year. But you have to be open-minded and be willing to change and willing to adapt and adjust to some of the information that might be relevant to you. So once again, appreciate all you guys showing love. Texas in the house. What's up, Dallas, Seattle. Ryan, good to see you. I don't know if you're in Vegas or wherever you're traveling a lot. Um, Texas, what's up, Mark? Good to see you, man. So guys, we're going to do a quick contest. I love doing contests. Um, this message is going to be very important to uh, understand if you really want to maximize your life and your peace of mind and your business at the end of the year. So we're going to do a contest. All you need to do is comment where you're uh, watching from. I want to see where everyone's watching from and share this stream and you will get a chance to either win um, my mixtapes, uh, motivational mixtapes, or my books. You can choose, by the way. I'll pick the winner and you guys choose. Or you can win some Young Ambition. This is a Young Ambition uh, clothing line shirt. You can win anything you want from youngambition.co. All you have to do is comment below where you're watching from and obviously uh, share. And we'll look at everyone who shared and commented. And we're going to do a contest uh, within the next 24 hours for you to win some cool stuff. Because I want to make sure we get this message out there. Um, let me share one more time. Hold on one second, you guys. I'll be ready to roll. I didn't see where you guys are calling in from. It's crazy technology-wise that we can have people watching from all over the world. This was unheard of like 10 years ago and it's, it's pretty nuts. I do not take it for granted to be able to reach people all over the world. It's crazy. One more share. All right, so let's do this. So how do you maximize the end of the year? And how did you go from broke to six figures? And how did you build a business from scratch? How do you rise above the noise in this economy where there's businesses being, start, being started every single five seconds, right? I really wanna give you tactical and relevant content 
for you to really take with you? And for me, the answer was I was always trying to hack time. I was always trying to cut my learning curve in half. And I was always trying to connect with the people that have already been to where I want to go. So I don't have to make all these same mistakes that they're making. A smart person learns from their mistakes but a really successful person learns from other people's mistakes so they can cut their learning curve in half and they don't have to make the same mistakes as everybody else does, right? So I assure you with absolute confidence that this call will save you a ton of frustration, a lot of money, headache, and energy. And I wanna be very tactical when I give you the steps on solidifying a great December, even, and I don't mean a great December where you're working every day and you're getting the best results possible by working extra hours and working 100 hours. No, I mean the best December you've ever had while maximizing your relationships, taking some time off. And I think too many people still these days, and it's a facade and it needs to be broken because it's a myth. I think too many people equate their best month ever or their best year ever or their best sales week ever with the amount of hours they put in. And that is extremely false. Some of the best months I've ever had this year is when I actually didn't work the most, but I was the most strategic and intentional, right? So this is the worst way to think if you want to build a sustainable business and be a real CEO. Yes, it takes hard work, but too many people are like, hustle, hustle, hustle. Yeah, that can only get you so far. So what you need to crush the next six months to a year is not more hours. It's more strategy because there's 4,000 ways to get to an end result, but there's one optimal way. And it doesn't mean adding hours to your week. It means telling yourself, I will be disciplined instead of working all the time. All right. And comment your thoughts below, guys. I want to get engaged. I'm going to answer your questions in a little bit. Um, but next Friday is December. And I want you guys to go on a 30 day journey, a 30 day challenge, because how you treat December and how you treat the next five weeks of your life determines how the entire 2018 goes. Now, not for society, but for game changers. Most people think that December uh, 31st or January 1st is when 2018 starts. And the reality is 2018 really started three to four weeks ago. So 2018 is right now. And there's two types of holiday seasons that you can have as a brother, sister, husband, wife, mom, dad, friend, leader, there's two types of holiday seasons you can have. The one you want and the one you don't want. And the more you think things through, the less regret you're gonna have. The more you sweat in peace, the less you bleed in war. And the more you give, the more you get. The problem is really thinking things through that I've done the last couple of years and it's been a headache because some of us type A, D, D, D people want to just work, 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 go, 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 action, action, action. No, no, no. You have to sometimes take a step back and be more intentional and be more strategic than ever before and really think things through to the end result. So some of the stuff I'm going to have you do is not comfortable. It's simple, but it's not easy. But you have to tell yourself if it's easy, you don't want it. Sometimes you have to remind yourself what's too hard for most people is perfect for you. Right, So without intention and strategy, um, you can't really use hope and ambition as a real strategy because it's not sustainable, all right? So the first step to really maximizing the end of the year, and what's up, everybody? I recognize a lot of you guys. What's up, Ryan? Jamie, Carrie, Stefan, good to see you. Adrian, a lot of game changers on here. I love it. Thank you for the birthday wishes. I appreciate it, guys. So step one is awareness and understanding. If you're not aware of these things I'm gonna share, it's impossible to change. Awareness is really the first step because like I've said many times, <clears throat> but it's such a important philosophy to understand. At this moment in time, I know 15, 16, 17 year olds on track to make a million dollars this year, this year, 2017. And I know broke 40 and 50 year olds. And the difference is it, age is irrelevant now. Experience is even irrelevant because I know people that have the same job for 20 years and they go, I have 20 years of experience. <clears throat> no, you don't. You have one year repeated 20 times because you're not continuing to get better and invest in yourself and really always trying to better your best. So age is irrelevant. It's all about adapting to the new times and being willing to change <clears throat> and being willing to become more valuable and being willing to do things differently than you have been, all right? So how to finish big. The last leg of 2017, guys, determines everything. Whether you're hobbling across the finish line 
or you're ending in victory. And you can make up for all the time this year that you didn't give your all this last five weeks. It doesn't matter how many bad decisions you've made in your business, in your life, in health, whatever. The past 11 months, you're always one decision away from making the right decision. I think the biggest tragedy in today's society is so many people let their past dictate their future too much and they let their past have too much leverage on their future. And they base their future off of their previous fears or insecurities, not their potential. So this final stretch determines uh, everything about 2018, but it demands a new you. Everyone has the next level that they're capable of. I know personally, I'm looking at some of the people on the feed. Some of you guys are making three, 400 grand. I already know that, but there's a next level. Whether you're making 30 grand, 50 grand, 80 grand, 200 grand, 10 million, it doesn't matter. There's always another level of you to get to. So here's what you have to realize. In the NFL, the last two minutes of each half, the most points are scored. In the Major League Baseball, the ninth inning is almost always both teams' strongest innings. Retail, e-commerce sales, I think it was 25 to 40% of the sales for the entire year happened the last 45 days. So I want you guys to realize there's a lot of time left, but you have to have urgency. The race of this year is won or lost in the final push. During the push, uh, you have to make sure you're focused on breaking the tape of the finish line with massive momentum, all right? So you have to try and win before the game begins. What I mean by that is doing the opposite of most people. Think about what most people do in December. They're trying to take the time off. They're, they're not working out. They're eating more unhealthy. They're not planning. <clears throat> they're not putting their workouts in their schedule. And they're waiting for the new year. But it doesn't matter how you feel in the moment. Everything's determined by your previous habits. Right? And the momentum or the lack of that you've built. So I've realized if you really want to differentiate, you got to do the opposite of most people. Okay? What do most people watch? What do most people do? What do most people talk about? Do the opposite. This is actually a great strategy in itself in business. It's strange advice for people that aren't familiar, but it's a game changer. Do the opposite of most people in society. All right. When I say mere the successful, I mean only mere people that have the results you want. Most people overeat and they eat based off pleasure versus health. Most people don't have enough energy to go after their dreams. Most people sleep in and don't have a morning routine. Most people make excuses instead of progress. Most people focus on negative versus positive. So I challenge you for this next five weeks, don't be like most people. Most people pray for the weekends and they hate Mondays. I love Mondays. Okay, I, I think today's Monday. I sometimes forget. Today's Monday. I love Mondays, right? Most people sell themselves short. And I'm on this to tell you, don't do that, all right? Here's some things that I've learned in the last final stretch of the year. Don't travel Sundays. There's, there's really nothing worse because it's, it's so inconvenient because everybody else travels Sundays. Don't shop when everybody else shops. Don't eat out Friday, Saturday night because everyone else is out. Don't go to Costco Saturday morning. Don't get gas when people get gas. Don't work out when everyone else works out. You want to find ways to save time and hack time so you could spend time on more valuable things <clears throat> that mean a lot to you, all right? So number one is just the awareness of making sure that you're very crystal clear on what you're doing the end of the year, which I'll talk about the schedule. But number two is stack up as much fuel and motivation and juice as possible. It's always reasons come first, results come second. So what I mean by that is you have to figure out why you want to have an amazing end of the year. You have to figure out why you want to have an amazing holiday season with no money problems or no money issues. And don't get me wrong. I've been there. I've had money issues. I've been dead broke. So I'm not sitting there not relating to the people that are struggling. I've been there and that's what gave me the hunger to never go back there. But why do you want to maximize the rest of this year? Think about that. Write down your reasons. It's the only way to build a great lifestyle next year. I think progress is the number one motivator right now. Um, money for next year, uh, providing for your family, increase your influence, more time for things you care about. I don't know. But pick one or two reasons. What are your strongest reasons of why you want to maximize your business and maximize your success, maximize your wealth, your health, your finances, whatever. Maybe share some reasons below. Why don't you guys share below? What are some reasons why you're on this live feed? Why do you want to maximize the rest of this year and build massive momentum into 2018? If you don't have reasons and fuel to pull you through the tough times, you're going to let the tough times define you and it's easier to give up. It's easier to give up. 
want to see some reasons. Adrian, I never watched football, but watched last Super Bowl. My God, what a comeback. <clears throat> exactly. Good point. 2017 can be like that. What's up, Kirk Knowles? A lot of champions on this. Momentum is everything, 100%. More time with family. I think that's one of the biggest things is more time with family. Touch more people, inspire 2 million people. Love it. That's amazing. So you have to stack reasons. And you have to look at these reasons all the time. I have this. This is 2015. I made this in 2014. And it has my, my driving desires and my top reasons. I call it my inner drive. You ha I have these every single year. But you have to have reasons that drive you, all right? Because if, if you don't have reasons and you don't sell yourself on why you're going to maximize at the end of the year, then you're not going to do it. You're going to give up when things get tough. And I want you to be the select few that really have the most amazing month you've ever had. And let me give you a preference here. When I ran a sales team, we had 160 people on the team at once. We had 13 or 14 W2 employees uh, and a lot of salespeople. And we broke almost every record. And you guys know if you've been in my previous company, we had um, an amazing December every year. When most sales went down in December, our uh, sales team crushed it. They had record-breaking months. They had record-breaking paychecks. They had record-breaking fulfillment and confidence and peace of mind and amazing times with their family because I taught them the same stuff, okay? So number three is, here's the key. Write down everything and prioritize. So one is become aware. Two is stack a lot of reasons of why you want to maximize the end of the year. And three is write down everything and prioritize. So the best thing you can do when you want to clear your mind and you want to get rid of all the fuzzy thinking out there is write everything down. Get everything out of your head onto paper. Something happens when you write things down and you get rid of all the fluff in your head because 95% of things that stress you out won't matter in a year or two. And whatever you focus on multiplies. So if you focus on the negative or what you're frustrated or what you don't have, then you're going to get more of that. If you focus on what you're grateful for, you get out of your feelings and you focus on all the things that you have to be proud of and to be happy about, that multiplies. It's impossible to be frustrated when you're grateful, which is why I try to stay in a state of gratitude, which I think this new economy is, is so aware that it's about positivity now. It's about positivity, not negativity. And I don't usually get anyone, because I have such an amazing fan base, Usually people are so positive, but there might be one every couple feeds that there's a little negative Nancy. But if we focus on it, you have to realize you'll never meet a successful hater. So get all the negativity and the noise out of your head, right? So this will refocus your mind on truly what's important. So here's the key. Here's some tactics now. So whatever's most important to you, wealth, health, finances, family, you want to plan out the next five weeks of when you're doing certain things. Don't do this on the call right now, but this has to be done in the next couple days. So one is write out all your workouts for the end of the year. When are you going to work out? You have to tell yourself what gets scheduled gets done from here on out. Your schedule is a reflection of your integrity. Integrity. So write out your schedule for the end of the year. So write out all your workouts. Write out when you're going to be with your family. Write out what you're committed to personal growth-wise. Now, if anyone would be kind enough to write these bullet points down and post them in the notes so people can copy and paste, that'd be amazing. So write down your workouts for the end of the year, write down your schedule for the end of the year, like when you'll be with your family, uh, the things you can't change, meetings, um, personal growth things. What are you committed to personal growth wise? Write out very clear expectations for your team and the tasks for your entire organization. So every single person on your team has clarity on how to maximize the end of the year, but also knows that you have their best interests in mind and you wanna tell them, it's not about working a ton of hours, it's about working more strategic and intentional than you ever have so you can be present with your family, right? So after you've organized everything and put it into your schedule, this will refocus your mind. So all your workouts, what are your profit producing activities? Like you wanna prioritize your profits here, okay? So profits, people, messages, leverage your most important uh, partnerships and your most important uh, prospects into your schedule. When are you going to make calls? So think about what are the non-negotiables for your business that have to move your business forward, that have to produce results in your business. Because your job as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, is to produce results in your business whether you feel like it or not. Okay? So write out for the next five weeks, what are your profit-producing activities that have to happen every single week, regardless if you feel like doing them or not? 
okay? Here's a big one. What are five potential distractions you might encounter during the final stretch of 2017? What are five potential distractions? If you take care of your distractions and, and uh, interruptions before they come up, you'll never have interruptions. Holiday parties, right? Unwanted friends, or unmotivated friends, sorry, unwanted friends is bad. Unmotivated friends, right? Weather, weather. So obviously if you're in Oregon, I know uh, some people here from Florence, uh, it's probably not gonna be sunny the next couple weeks, right? So you gotta find a way to get over that bad weather. Um, mood. Maybe it's a mindset thing, being involved in too much, saying yes too much. You have to ruthlessly eliminate distractions. Turn off phone notifications. Only check email once or twice a day. Um, complete uh, simple projects right away. So for me, in an inbox, if I can complete something right away, I do it. I don't let it uh, sit on my mind. And I don't, if I open an email, I either respond, delete, or uh, or forward it and get it done. I don't let it sit there, right? Um, also, declutter as much as you can going into the uh, December, declutter. I just cleaned my entire closet, got rid of all the clothes I didn't want. If you, if you haven't worn something for the last year, the odds of you wearing it are zero. Now you might think, why? Are, I thought we were talking about business. Trust me, when you declutter your desk, your office, your closet, your car, and you finally, finally clean everything, it's such a different focus that you have when you're, uh, when you're focusing on your work or when everything else is clean and decluttered, okay? Remember, winning requires a little bit more. The difference in winning and losing is just a little bit more focus, a little bit more effort, okay? So write down what distractions you're gonna get rid of the next five weeks. And remember, guys, when you put in time with your family, you wanna be fully present. People ask me, how do I stay motivated? You're fully present with your family. You admit you're not gonna work. I don't want you to work when you're with your family. I want you to be fully present because there's nothing more valuable than a fully present human being when they're in front of you. Someone that's distracted or thinking about something else or on their phone all the time, I used to be that person and I, and I, and I couldn't stand it. Now when I'm with friends that are on their phone all the time, it's really frustrating and disheartening and a little bit disrespectful. So I'm not saying you're gonna work every day all day. I'm saying when you're with your family, be with your family. When you're working out, work out. When you're at your office, be at your office focused. When you're at the beach with your daughter or son, be at the beach, okay? But you have to have a prevention plan to get rid of interruptions that might come up throughout the next five weeks, and you have to have a result ritual to get you back in the zone after the holidays, which I'll explain in a second. So prioritize your profitability. Do as much as you can to schedule out the next five weeks of everything you have. Booking appointments. Right? You need to tell yourself, once again, if it doesn't get scheduled, it doesn't get done. Period. If it doesn't get scheduled, it doesn't get done. Getting fired up. You guys getting this? Show me some, show me some uh, thumbs up if you guys are, if you guys are uh, getting value, if you're understanding this. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Give me some hearts. Give me some angry faces if you're, if you're mad at what I'm talking about. <laughs> There's always one. What's up, JB? Cool. So next, you want to celebrate weekly progress. Every single week, celebrate weekly progress versus focusing on perfection or living in the gap. Focus on what you've completed. Focus on how far you've came in the last six months to a year. Focus on what you're grateful for. I always write down my top six wins. So in my, um, in my schedule, I have my weekly master plan right here. And I always write down, see right here, it says top six wins um, from last week. Previous seven day review, what are you 100% committed to making happen this week? What are you excited about this week? Um, top three profit producing activities, top three non-negotiables, who I'm gonna reach out to. But this is very important every week to focus on progress, not perfection. So many people live in the gap of where they could be or where they think they should be. Oh, I'm 27, oh, I'm 24, oh, I'm 31. I should be so far along. No, you're exactly where you need to be to learn exactly what you need to learn to get the lessons that you need to get to build an amazing future period. 
So focus on how far you've came, not where you think you should be. Don't be too hard on yourself. You want to be disciplined, but don't beat yourself up. If you're going to do anything to yourself, it's to bet on yourself. Never live in the gap. That's why I say focus on weekly progress. Every single week, sit with your significant other or by yourself or with your business partner. Hey, what did we do well this week? What got your juices flowing this week? What was our, our, uh, our, our profit-producing activities that we executed on? Hey, now, where can we improve? Where did we waste time? When was I not in my zone? When did I get distracted? When was I lazy? Why was I lazy? So it's really analyzing why your last week is exactly how it was and how to make sure this week is even better. If you prioritize and you celebrate weekly progress and you get strategic on how to make sure the next week's better than the previous week and you continue to better your best, it's impossible to have a bad month. It's impossible. Impossible, okay? So number five. So number four, celebrate weekly progress uh, versus perfection. Number five, what is your game changers holiday ritual? This is the ritual you create to solidify yourself getting back in the zone. So this is the most important part of the call. So it's, it's hard to build momentum when you take a lot of breaks. And I'm not saying don't take breaks. I'm saying be present with the people that you love and, and the people that you care about and, and admit that you're not going to work. You're going to take time off. But the best thing you can do before that is maximize the time up until that. The best thing you can do when you go on vacation, when you go home, when you hang with family, is maximize your time, your energy, your focus, and your results before that point because it feels amazing taking the time off. And then admit you're going to take time off, but then create a ritual that you write down that you think about to get you back in the zone right when you're done with your family. So a lot of times the worst day of the year is after Thanksgiving. The worst day of the year is after Christmas. The worst day of the year is after New Year's because most people start the New Year hungover. That's a guaranteed way of mediocrity. Um, but those people usually talk about, I'm going to have the best year ever after this, after this week, next week, after this week. No, 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 no. It's now or never. Now matters, not next week, next month, right? So here's some ideas to get back in the zone. Maybe it's changing your environment. Maybe it's calling somebody that's playing the game at a higher level. Maybe a mentor. Uh, maybe it's getting active and sparking your body. Maybe it's listening to something that fires you up and gets your juices flowing. Maybe something that really gets you fired up and excited. A video, a song, an audio. Maybe it's my mixtape. I appreciate all you guys that have bought my mixtape. I don't know. Um, look at your most compelling reasons. What fires me up is, is instantly, I could get fired up just by looking at my most important reasons. It's, it's so simple for me. Okay? Uh, and, and don't, I'm not telling you I'm always in the zone. I'm not always in the zone. I go through tough times. I have anxiety sometimes. I, I want to do too much and I'm, I, I have ADD and my energy is, is very high. As you can see, I'm moving around right now. So I'm trying to relax more, right? But if I'm out of the zone, here's an important part of my uh, consistent motivation. When I'm out of the zone, I tell myself, I don't let that bug me or get to me. If I don't feel a certain way about something in life or somebody in my life or if things aren't going well, I always admit things will be better. I don't dwell on it. I will be motivated again. I could feel the worst I've ever felt. I could feel unmotivated to even get up, but I say, I'll be better. Just going through something quickly. I'll be better. And if you could admit that to yourself, you have so much more peace of mind, right? But if you dwell on the negative, it takes over your body. Brian Tracy said, there's nothing worse. The two worst things on earth, two worst things on earth are... Negativity, like people focusing on the negative and focusing on what they can't control and then excuses because excuses turn into a story that allows you not to reach what you want to reach. So keep that in mind. Nothing worse than excuses and focusing on negativity. So what's your zone? What's your ritual to get you back in the zone? Really think about top ways you've shifted your emotional state. Think about in the past two years, when have you been in the best state of mind? When have you got the most fired up? I used to have a list I look back on from 2009 or 10 uh, when I was in direct sales. I used to look at this list and the entire list were words, things, phrases, songs that fired me up. So it, it doesn't matter what it is, right? Whatever fires you up, gets you in the zone, you have to make sure you create that list. So if you're out of the zone after the holidays, you look at that list, you go through them, and you feel your emotional state rising, and you're back in the zone. Got it? So let's simplify and review. So once you have your, uh, your reasons, you have the awareness that it's now or never. You have to maximize the next 
five weeks. 2018 starts right now. And you want to make sure that you stack as much reasons on top of that as humanly possible. Why do you want to build an amazing lifestyle? Why do you want to maximize 2017? Why do you want to rip up your old script and say, you know, I'm sick of making 50K or 40K. I'm trying to make 100K next year. I'm sick of making 70K. I'm sick of making 200K. you got to stack so much fuel and juice that when things get tough, it doesn't matter. The moment you set a goal that's worthwhile, you're going to be challenged and you're going to be in a moment that is going to tell you if you deserve that goal or not. There's going to be many moments where you can choose growth or choose to reside and choose what's easy. Pressure makes or breaks people. So you have to have fuel to get past that. If a goal was easy, everybody would be doing them and they wouldn't be worth much, right? Reasons come first, results come second. Next, write everything down and prioritize your workouts. When are you going to, uh, Reach out to people that you care about as far as relationships. How are you going to continue to massage and create genuine relationships with the people you care about? Not just family, but people in your business, business partners, associates, friends. I just had a great call with my boy Gerard Adams an hour ago, right? We talked for a half hour just about life and, and what we're doing next year. And, and he had some kind words about me and my birthday. Um, the birthday brought it up, but it was amazing to just have a genuine conversation. There's nothing, no accomplishments, no amount of money that can take the place of a genuine conversation with people that you actually value and care about. So don't get your business priorities wrong, right? I know CEOs that are worth 500 million, but their kids, they don't even know who their kids are. That's not very world-class. I know best-selling authors who forgot about their health and have broken relationships. No, it's about being world-class in every area. You guys know this because I preach it so much but you have to write down and prioritize everything that's most important to you, okay? Your profit-producing activities. What are you committed to personal growth rise? Your clear expectations of your team, the task of your organization, and make sure everything is in your schedule. Declutter yourself. Declutter uh, your, your, your office, your desk, your closet, whatever it is. Get a clear mind and clear everything out so you have a fresh start Going into, the ne going into December next Friday, right? Figure out your distractions, celebrate your progress. Don't focus on perfection or where, you've, where you could be. Focus on how far you've came and then get your holiday ritual in place to, to get back in the zone. If you get your holiday ritual in place um, to get back in the zone after the holiday, you will be ahead of 95% of people that are in business or wanting to crush 2018. And I'll tell you this, if you're in sales, there's no better time to sell there's no better time to get your product out there than right now because companies are spending millions and billions of dollars right now to get customers in buying moods. Literally, they're doing all the marketing for you. Customers, all they're thinking about, to be honest, you guys are some of the customers, is buying things for Christmas, for the holidays, for 2018, buying things. So they've spent millions and billions of dollars to get all your customers and prospects into buying moods. So get your product out there, do a lot of appointments and do what you can to book in the next five weeks, time every single week to book appointments for January. There's no better way to build your momentum and confidence in the January and 2018 than having a fully booked week one and two of January. My December and a lot of my January is already booked. I'm going to reach out. Me and Gerard are speaking, possibly speaking in Dubai in January. We haven't got the dates yet. So I'm going to reach out to the guy that's booking us and say, hey, if we don't have the dates by the end of this week, we, we can't commit because we have other stuff going on. So start booking your January as well. So got it? All right. I'm, I'm, uh, that's what I got for you guys. I hope you guys got some value. Let's do a little bit of Q&A. If you guys have any questions about anything I talked about, about life, um, anything that stood out to you that you want to kind of uh, go over again or, or need some clarification on, let me know. And I, once again, I appreciate you guys um, dearly. I, I love what I do and I love adding value. And I only want to share things that I've actually went through. And I've had really bad November, Decembers and bad starts to the new year. And I've had amazing ones. And I feel like it's not fair to me to keep in what I've experienced to have amazing end of the years and amazing 2015, 16, 17 at the beginning of January because it does nothing sitting inside me. So that's what I want to share with you guys as well. So hope you guys got some value. Thank you for sharing that, Adrian. I appreciate it. Daniel, I got a Patrick Bet David card. Yeah, he sent me this. Yep. Just, uh, just Clinky, I, don't, I think that's your name. 
what should I do if I have problems producing my product because I live in a country where it's just no production of that kind at all? I would just outsource it, go out of the country, um, start researching. If you have to move, if you have to go somewhere for a month or two to produce it, that's fine. But I would look up people that have had your same issue. There's been a lot of people that can't do certain things because stipulations in that company or in that country, they just outsource or go to a different country. So there's always a solution. If not, you got to move on if you can't control it. Good question. John, any ideas for a ritual? It just depends. Think about the last year. What has fired you up the most? Is it having amazing relationships? Is it when you listen to your favorite song? Is it when you're done with a workout? Is it when you've talked to someone that really thinks bigger than you and levels you up? I don't know. I, I can't, I mean, the examples I gave you is what I do, change my environment. I call, I call one of my mentors. I get active and I spark my body. I listen to my favorite song. I look at my most compelling reasons and my vision. So I don't know. I mean, you have to figure out what you've done in the past to get yourself fired up and juiced because lack of momentum and lack of uh, motivation is a dangerous road. That leads to frustration, depression. So you really have to pinpoint when you go down a certain road emotionally, how to switch back out of that really quickly because it's, it's very easy to go down that road. And I've had a lot of people reach out with serious issues, suicide, depression. And I've tried my best to shift that emotional state and to, to get them out of that behavior um, and really, really help them because it's, it's dangerous and it's not, it's not easy to deal with. So I'm not sitting here downplaying when you're not motivated or discouraged or depressed. You just have to figure out in the past couple of years what has got you juiced and in the zone more than anything else. And you put those rituals in place so you don't go down that uh, negative hole again. You're welcome, Pedro. I appreciate you. Value bombs galore. By the way, if you just got on, if you share and you comment, you're going to be uh, entered to win either one of my mixtapes or my books um, or a Young Ambition sweatshirt. So either of those you can win. I'm going to pick the winner in the next 24 hours. Um, so thank you to everyone that's already shared this. But uh, I'll do a couple more minutes of Q&A. Um, how can I effectively attract clients? I just started a travel company a few months back. Well, you have to become more valuable and differentiate yourself and figure out where your ideal clients are. There's a couple ways. You can, uh, you can partner with a company that complements your ideal client that already has access to your ideal client and you can provide some value and say, hey, if any client you bring me, I will give you this, right? But the biggest key to attracting clients is positioning yourself versus prospecting. So figuring out first, Chris, Chrisia, Chrisia, I think's your name, cool name. Uh, what makes you different? Like if someone's like, hey, why should I do business with you and your travel company versus the 4,000 other tra travel companies on the planet? You have to be able to very, very confidently and tactically say, here's the five differentiators. Here's why mine's different. Two, you can also uh, reach out to influencers to ideal clients that have a lot of influence and give your services for free. This has been working wonders this past year or two for a lot of people. I have a kid, he might be on here, Josh. Josh, let me know if you're on here. I know you're a personal growth freak. Um, he's 17, I think he might be 18 now. He was making 13 or $14,000 a month uh, online on Instagram. And he was making more than his teachers, by the way, which it's not too hard to do these days. Um, but he was making money on Instagram and some other social platforms because he was giving away his services for free and saying, hey, if I deliver, if I get you results, if it's what, it's what I say it is, then you can pay me the second month. And if you're confident in your ability to get your clients results and you're confident in your business and your service and your product, um, you won't feel bad giving it for free because you know they're gonna wanna pay for it. If not, oh well, go to another client. So that's what I would do. I would start giving away your stuff for free and like someone sent me something a while back, a product. I really, really liked it. It was like a hundred dollar product. I really liked it. I shared it on my social media. I put their link in there. I put their, uh, their link in one of my emails and I, I told people about it and they got a ton of sales from it. They said, thank you so much. One of the people that saw it introduced me to someone else who now we have a partnership with. So I'm not saying send me stuff. Um, that's not what I'm saying at all. I don't want anything. But I'm giving an example that in this new economy, it's all leading out with value. Value first, value, 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 and then ask. Most people are asking too quick without giving real value. So you gotta give value first, right? Hope that answers your question. 
Thank you for being inspired. I appreciate it. Leaders Create Leaders is amazing. That was a great episode with Gerard. Thank you so much. Yes, John, definitely value first is such a game changer as well. Um, Jeremy, ideas on how I might effectively show clients the value of buying extended warranties. Um, you have to figure out what's most important to them and figure out what problem you're solving or what need you're fulfilling or what frustration you're taking away and pinpoint that. All they care about, most clients, sadly, is what's in it for them. So a lot of times if you're showing clients the value of something, you're showing them things that you think they want or need. But meanwhile, the real thing they want or the real value is over here. So you have to survey, ask, do your due diligence to figure out what people really want. What do they lay in bed thinking at night? Um, what are their deepest frustrations and what problem are you solving? Maybe it's peace of mind. Maybe it's certainty. Maybe you're taking away something that they can't stand doing and it's such a time suck that you're saving them time and they value their time. It depends on your client. It depends on what their biggest fear is and what problem you're solving. So once you do your due diligence, you ask your clients, you talk to people, you do your due diligence. You, I keep saying that because it's so important. You survey your list. You, you ask questions. Once you figure out what the number one thing they want from that and the value they get from your, your uh, extended warranty, then you pinpoint that issue. And you just show them, hey, you know how this, this, and this, and you hate doing this? That's what the warranty does is blank. And this is why we're different, blank. See what I mean? If you just simplify, most things people talk about, they don't even care about. So the likelihood of your client, the likelihood of the marketplace responding to you because you want something or you want them to have something is obsolete, it's zero. So that's why you have to understand your customers are marketing geniuses. Your customers are marketing geniuses. If you just ask them what they want, if you articulate their problem more than anybody else, and if you understand their fear and ambition and your product solves that, all you have to do is place it in front of them and share with them, hey, you know your biggest fear is this or you hate wasting time with this. This takes care of all that. And I'm going to give, because I value who you are, I'm going to give it to you free for a month. If you feel like you like it and it's valuable, we'll continue. If not, hope you got some value. I'm always here for you. That is the new economy of business, period. So hope that, hope that helps. Appreciate it, guys. Um, thanks again. I got to continue my day. I have a crazy, crazy day today. Um, by the way, if you're in, um, someone keeps asking about the, someone asked about the academy. If you want to check out the academy, it's gamechangersmovement.com. Gamechangersmovement.com. But once again, thank you for all your support, all the love. I appreciate you. I'm going to continue doing Facebook Lives. I'm going to continue adding as much value as possible. Thank you, Entrepreneur Magazine, for the love and support as well. Shout out to Steph for being amazing and uh, for allowing me to expand my influence and to add value to people. I will never take my platform for granted. And the most valuable thing I think on earth is the effect you have on other people. So get your word out there. Get your voice out there. Get your business out there. You're doing yourself a disservice not getting your message and story out there as well. So thanks again, guys. Have an amazing rest of your, uh, your afternoon or your night or your morning, wherever you are in the world, and I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.